Okay, so I've just unpacked uh, the EW112P. And so what have we got? We're going to have, obviously, our transmitters, receivers. Uh, I've already taken the liberty of putting the batteries inside, though I'll show you again how to do that in a sec. We have the CL100, which uh, connects our receiver to our mixer or recorder. We have our 3.5 millimeter, and this is for connecting to a DSLR, like this one. Um, we have the mic, which I've already taken out. It does also come with a clip, um, but I've misplaced that already somewhere, which is not very good. Um, and we have a mount uh, to go onto like a horseshoe connection. Again, on top of a DSLR um, or another camera or another kind of magic arm. Um, and that should, uh, yeah, hold the receiver or, or even a transmitter maybe. Uh, there's lots of different combinations that we'll kind of get into later in terms of mounting and everything else. But I just wanted to start off with um, how we kind of set these up. So, firstly, I can tell that this is a transmitter because it's got a mute button and it says mic slash line level for its input. Um, so let's just go ahead and connect uh, a radio mic to it. Uh, these are locking connectors, so you can screw them straight on. Right is tight and left is loose. Make sure you push it all the way in. Um, and then that should hold. Uh, these are very rugged, these, which is really, really nice. Um, okay, so to open it, uh, there's two little paddles at the side. And if you squeeze them together, it opens up. So what we have is obviously where we put our batteries. Battery life is uh, pretty long, to be honest. It's going to be like a good six or eight straight hours on a normal alkaline. It'd be slightly less on rechargeable, but I mean, on 2,900 milliamp hours, um, it, it again should last a, a similar time, to be honest. Maybe even longer, uh, depending if you're turning on or on in between. So they're, they're very good for kind of a, a set and forget scenario, as long as you've made sure your battery life is good. Um, so, what do we have on the front is essentially uh, a set button, and that's what we're going to use as essentially an, like an enter button and a menu button. Uh, we have an on-off, and that's obviously useful for turning things on or off. Um, then we have uh, an on button and an AF peak. Uh, the AF peak is just if the microphone is actually peaking, or the transmitter is peaking because the microphone gain is set too loud. Um, on. now. Strangely enough, uh, when we turn it on, as I will now, you've got to hold for a couple of seconds, you'll see it's red, and it's quite confusing because it has low battery, right? But our battery's full, I've just put these in, uh, they're fresh out of the box. Uh, it's only when these, this starts blinking um, that then you need to worry that a low battery is happening. Um, and we also have our scroller, which will go up and down. Uh, now, I did go into this before, so let me just turn off something. So let's go through um, what we see here. So what we see here is on this side, on the AF, we can see that if we tap the microphone, obviously that shows that we're getting level through, which is obviously really nice. We have P for pilot tone, which is essentially a way of um, ensuring or trying to ensure that there's no interference and that the bank or the channel that these two are on um, stays clean or as clean as possible. Um, you've got your battery life here, uh, obviously three bar systems, three bar full, two bars, 75%, 30% and dead. And then we have uh, the name, EW100G3, you can customize that to whatever you want if you like to name your transmitters or receivers. Uh, the channel is the bank, and the, this bank 1.1 correlates to 606.500. I'm in the UK, so this is our kind of start of the legal range that we can use uh, for radio mics. Then, uh, if we have mute mode enabled, you'll also see a mute function. Anytime um, you have the mute mode on, essentially. Um, but I'll show you how to turn that off as well in the menus. Uh, you can see that AF peak as well, blinking right there. Okay, so let's go in. Now, our first screen would be sensitivity, and this is what we're doing to calibrate our mic 
Um, so let me just hold it in a generic position. So this is pretty close to my mouth, and you can see that I've still left myself enough headroom, uh, which is obviously really advantageous uh, later down the line, because obviously once the microphone's gone into here, this is effectively a preamp, just like it would be in your mixer, recorder, etc. Um, so it's important to get it right at this stage and then you'll have no problems further down the line uh, with things like noise floor level, etc. Um, so you can just calibrate that again on the fly depending if you need it louder then you turn the sensitivity up and if you need it quieter uh, then you turn the sensitivity down. Um, again pressing set to confirm everything as well. If you just press back then your old setting um, won't stay. So 33, but look, it's 42. So, uh, channel frequency blocks, I mean, the only thing I'm going to mention is just keeping these on the same. You've got to have them on the same one, otherwise they will not talk to each other. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, there's a whole other thing about finding the best blocks, I guess, but again, that's a whole separate tutorial, really. Um, we have uh, the name again. Like I said, you can change that if you want, if you like to name them. Um, Bob or whatever. Uh, then we can go across and that auto lock function. So if we have that on active, what will happen is essentially uh, if you leave it a couple of seconds, uh, then a little uh, kind of lock will appear here flashing. And that means it hasn't quite locked yet, but it's going to unless you do something. And now it's locked. So now if I press anything like set it'll say locked. And to get out of this, you would press set, you would press up, or you press, yeah, you have to press up, and it would ask you, do you want to unlock? And then you press set, as in yes, and then that's that. Um, I personally have that feature off, because again, it's just another couple of seconds if you need to slightly tweak something. Then we go into advanced, and so now you can customize uh, this tune, um, to this one. Um, instead of doing blocks, we can do specific frequencies if we need to. Um, there's different applications as well that'll help you with intermodulation. Um, so you may need to do custom frequencies and that's where you would do it. Uh, mute mode. So this is obviously when I flick this button. Um, a AF off means that it would just turn off um, any audio signal. It would essentially mute the microphone. Um, I usually have this on disabled uh, because lots of people, they'll put it on mute and then it just suddenly becomes like another thing you have to keep checking all the time. So if we go across to cable emulation, this is more uh, for kind of like uh, guitars and things like that. So I'll, I'll post in the blog a kind of written description on that. Uh, Pilot Tone, I'll post a description of that as well, but essentially it's trying to keep these um, kind of frequencies uh, clear and kind of rejecting other frequencies that try and come in and affect it. Uh, contrast, uh, obviously full contrast is bad, low contrast everything just washes out so do that as you want. Reset everything if you like. Uh, this is the current software version. I uh, bought these at the end of 2015 so uh, good old Black Friday purchase and that should be it, I think. Yeah, exit. So, that's it. Um, I'll just show you how to put on, in fact, I'll leave that for the receiver. So now let's go on to the receiver. So we open it up, hold and press for on, and you see we have the same kind of setup as we did with the other one, but notice we have an RF now. And the RF next to the AF is going to tell us how strong our signal is. So obviously they're very close together. Signal very strong. That's good. Um, we still get the name. Uh, we still get the bank. This 0 dB, um, basically what you're able to do is actually increase the signal that is received from the transmitter or decrease it by a set level of... Um, decibels. So that will show up there just to remind you essentially. Uh, and we've got battery life as well and specific frequency. 
Okay, so that's all pretty straightforward. Done that before. Squelch, again, I'll post a detailed description of this, uh, but it, it doesn't really concern you for uh, film work that much. Again, it's just easier sometimes to have these things written down than uh, for me to remember them on the fly. So, easy setup. Um, this is essentially like a list of frequencies, or you can scan a new list of frequencies. Um, I never use that, to be honest. Uh, this is, again, setting the same bank of frequency. You set your name. This AF out, so you can go plus 12 of sending, of boosting by 12 decibels the signal that you've already received. Um, or you can go down, down to like minus whatever. I usually keep this on zero because the less you are kind of adding uh, to a signal, the less noise there will be. So let's go on to auto lock again in active because it's just annoying to be honest. And then advanced. So we have the same setup of the tuning, uh, pilot tone active. If you do get problems uh, with them not communicating, do try and turn pilot tone off. Um, and that might fix the problem. I know it has for a couple of people. Um, LCD contrast the same, reset everything the same, same version number, and exit. And sync. So what we can do with sync, for instance. So let's say that we have um, two on different channels, and we want to line them up. I could go through and manually reset one to say um, 5.1, for instance, because this is what this one is on, 5.1. Um, but there is a slightly quicker way. So if we press set and go into the menu, and we press down, and we go to sync, now it's waiting to sync. And we see this kind of gray square here. There's two just next to the on-off button. If I line them up, then we should see a tick. And now you'll notice that it says 5.1 on our transmitter. And so everything should be lined up and ready to go. So what I've done now is I've plugged in um, my receiver uh, using a XLR uh, to the Sound Devices uh, 688, as you can see there. Um, I put it on channel 3 just so it's in the middle. Um, I've called it Sankin, even though it's not Sankin. <laughs> and this is what we're obviously going to try and get our sound from. So we are getting a little bit, but not a lot. Um, now, this is because uh, we need a bit more gain, as you can see here. Now, that's the fader going up, just so you can see it on the top as well. Um, but as I keep... As I keep talking, uh, if I try and do that now, that is still a bit too low. So we only go up to 32 on there. La la la. So that either means that something is too low on the transmitter or too low on the receiver um, because I'm not getting enough through. So let's see. Hello, 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 hello. So that's me talking directly into it. Um, and yeah, I mean, even on the display here, you can see that it's still quite low. So let's check the receiver. So I'm going to check it here. Do, do, do. Uh, what am I in? Oh, this is the receiver. Yeah. Well, it's on zero. I mean, we could boost that up. AF out. Plus 12. See if that helps the situation. Hello, 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 hello. So that's that's a better level, I think. Definitely. Um. We don't want to be using all of our gain, you see, on uh, the receiver. Um, another thing we could do is instead we could go up plus 12 on the transmitter um, instead of adding it again to the receiver. So let me just set the 
sensitivity. So if we have it at 30 instead of 42, then that is 12 decibels. Um, and now when we talk through see my camera, Nelly. Oh my God, it's really hard to focus. Let's prop it up. But I can't prop it up on such a slippy table. Anyway, slight taps. So that's obviously going to be good. Let's see if I can not mess it up. Hello, 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 hello. Sorry, my microphone's rubbing on the light, which isn't very good. Uh, this is all going a bit crazy. But, um, yeah. I think that should be better. La, 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 la. Now, why we go uh, line level is because we already want to do most of our gain structuring through the actual transmitters. Um, if we were doing mic level, uh, it would assume that it's a very small voltage coming in, where in fact we've already boosted it up. And so you get a lot more noise with that, or noticeably more noise. Um, and so those are the quick tricks and tips to kind of setting up and getting ready to record. So, if you've enjoyed this, uh, then feel free to check out soundrolling.com for even more information, training, and resources. I've been Matt Price, and I will catch you later.